Welcome to spreadsheet testing for socks. There's a difference between spreadsheet and system reports, and so we're going to go over that today. And also scope what are key spreadsheets. Tell you some of the criteria so that you can distinguish that. And then classify them high, medium, and low. And based on that classification, show you the steps to the testing. And we'll also talk about the sample size and the roll forward testing that we're doing. So what's the difference between a spreadsheet and a report? System generated reports that are exported into spreadsheets are not considered spreadsheets. Those are system generated reports and they're treated differently. And we actually have a blog or a session specific to systems reports. Spreadsheets are actual Excel sheets that we build with all the assumptions and sometimes part of it can come from a spreadsheet from a report and then we build on more criteria we add on calculations and we start to link them that's what makes spreadsheet often more complex than system reports but the first step to everything is scoping the key spreadsheets. We use spreadsheets for so many things that for SOX purposes, I want to give you four criteria to look at it so that you can say, are these key spreadsheets that even need testing? And in SOX, what we like to do is limit it to key spreadsheets instead of doing everything. Otherwise, we'll have too much work to do. So to do that, the first one is look at the materiality of the spreadsheet. And what that means is like when we are booking journal entries or we're recording transactions for the financial statements, how key, how much does this spreadsheet impact how much we record in our financials? We also look at the spreadsheet complexity. If it's, I have one client who had a workbook of tabs and it was over 60 tabs it was their forecasting that started one tab link to the next to the next to the next that's high complexity we also want to make sure the spreadsheet is associated with a key control because if it's not associated with a key control likely it's an important spreadsheet but it's not considered key for testing and finally does the spreadsheet serve a financial reporting or a financial purpose meaning it's not purely operational. So you could have a spreadsheet that calculates um, headcount and attendance for headcount, but that's good to know how many people are coming and how many people are um, on time, but it doesn't really impact your financial statements or has a financial reporting purpose. Eventually it may because you have low margins, but that doesn't directly impact your low margins at the moment. So if you're tracking attendance, you're tracking operating metrics that's excluded for SOX purposes. So the amount of testing that we do depends on whether the spreadsheets are high, medium, or low. So if it's high risk, of course, we'll do a lot more testing. And if it's low risk, we'll reduce the amount of work we have to do. Seems logical. So let's talk about the high or a tier one spreadsheet testing. If it's high, we would want to test the input by agreeing the spreadsheet inputs to the source documents on a sample basis. We also want to test the output. We'd actually want to look at the formula logic and identify on a sample basis, take some of the rows or some of the columns for hard-coded figures, links to the desktop files, links to temporary files, actually figure out from an output where does this go. We also want to test access. Who has access to the spreadsheet? Is it password protected? Is it limited to selected people? Because even if people have uh, good intentions, if you open a spreadsheet and you've done, I've done this often, I sometimes accidentally delete a cell and that cell is linked to everything and I've just completely screwed up all this, the formulas. And then if it's key, we also want to test uh, the backup testing, verifying that the spreadsheet is included in the company's backup of key data. Backup hasn't been as much of a problem because oftentimes companies back up the entire drive so your spreadsheets will be fine, but once in a while you run into a problem. If you have a medium or a tier two spreadsheet, now we reduce the amount of work, which makes sense. We're going to test the output meaning inspect the logic, identify the sample of hard-coded figures, trace it back to something. Again, look at the links on your, on your desktop, links to temporary files. We still want to test the backup. 
and we also want to look at access testing. Who has access to these files? And then when you look at the low testing, this is again low effort, so now you, you look at this, who has access to the spreadsheet? Is there some backup to the spreadsheet? So as our risk decreases, the amount of effort we spend on it also decreases. When we talk about the sample size or the roll forward and the for roll forward testing, the sample size, because spreadsheets are so manual and so people dependent, it follows the same sample size guidelines as your manual controls. So if your manual control, if you're in a high risk process, like an order to cash or financial close, some auditors require 25 to 45 samples. We may have to as we're testing those samples, look at the spreadsheets related to those various transactions if needed. And for roll forward testing, we would follow the same roll forward procedures as manual key controls. And the same logic is because spreadsheets are people dependent, they're manual controls, we would follow the same sample size as manual controls. So that's it on spreadsheet testing how to scope in or out key spreadsheets, how to classify them based on their importance, their materiality, their complexity, and then based on high, medium, and low, the amount of work will increase for high risk and decrease for low risk, and then the sample size follows manual controls. That's it. I hope you find this helpful, and we'll talk to you next time.